Welcome to our Solar Clips video series covering the basics of solar photovoltaics or solar PV. My name is Drew Chavon. I'm an extension specialist with the University of Maryland. And in today's video, we'll explore several methods to evaluate the power and energy consumption of different electrical devices. The information will be entered into a load assessment worksheet to help you determine the size of your solar electric system or how much power your system needs to generate. Before we get started, it'll be helpful to discuss the relationship between power and energy. The terms power and energy are often used interchangeably, but it will be helpful in today's discussion to understand the key differences between power and energy. Let's start by considering power. Power is defined as the rate at which energy is used, produced, or transferred. When we multiply the voltage, which is the push of electricity, by the current, or the flow of electricity, then we get power. This term describes the instantaneous consumption or production of electricity which is often measured in watts, which is denoted by the letter W, although larger systems may be measured in kilowatts, denoted by KW, or megawatts would be MW. Now, energy is simply the power multiplied by time. Hence, the term energy includes how long an electrical device has been used or how long it's been producing power. While electric energy is commonly measured in watt hours, WH. The bills from your electric utility will typically report your energy use in terms of kilowatt hours or KWH. To better understand the difference between power and energy, it may be helpful for us to compare the electricity flowing through a circuit to the water flowing through a garden hose. With this analogy, power is like the volume of water flowing through the hose under a given pressure and diameter. Energy, on the other hand, is like measuring the volume of water that has flowed through the hose over a given period of time. So with energy, we're now concerned with how long an electrical appliance is going to be used or how long that system is producing power. This is important because it helps us to ensure that the energy generated from a solar electric system will meet our actual electrical demand. So we can determine the size of a solar electric system based on how much power we need to make in order to supply that electrical load. Now we'll start by looking for the power ratings that are typically found on the, the back or the bottom of an electrical appliance or device. These labels will usually have a power rating or at least a voltage and current rating on them. So remember voltage times current equals power. But if for some reason you can't find any of this information on the device, you can, you can always look on the owner's manual that came with the device, or you could look on the manufacturer's website. You could even measure the voltage and current of the device with a multimeter. Regardless of how you obtain the power rating for a specific device, you can always determine the amount of energy that's required to operate that device by multiplying the power times the number of hours that the device is in use. But let's look at some examples. We'll start by looking at this air compressor, which according to its data label, operates at 120 volts and 12 amps. Multiplying 120 volts by 12 amps gives us a power of 1,440 watts. Likewise, this small motor has a rating of 115 volts and 10 amps, which provides a power of 1,150 watts. A simple light bulb, on the other hand, will typically have its power printed directly on the bulb itself. In this case, the bulb is specifying a power of 30 watts. With this said, power ratings don't always provide a realistic picture of how that electrical system operates in the real world. Take, for instance, the compressor on a refrigerator that cycles on and off throughout the day. The refrigerator in your kitchen, for example, may have a power under 100 watts when the compressor is off, but it may have a starting power that exceeds 1,000 watts when the compressor kicks in. So instantaneous power measurements or power ratings are not always as informative, especially for those electrical systems that have highly variable power consumption like a refrigerator. But it's still important to capture this variation when sizing a solar electric system. One way to assess variable power consumption is to use an electricity usage monitor that plugs in line between the electrical load and a standard electrical outlet on the wall. This particular monitor will display a number of useful metrics including the line voltage, current, and instantaneous power consumption. While energy is initially displayed as zero watt hours, the total energy consumed by an appliance will be accumulated over time 
alongside the actual number of hours that the device is in operation. Electrical appliances that cycle on and off should be measured over longer periods of time in order to get a more useful average. If your electricity usage monitor has no backup power or memory like this model, then you'll need to manually record any of the pertinent information before you disconnect it from the electrical outlet. We'll explore the use of these meters by considering several lighting examples, all having a brightness of 3,400 lumens. In this case, we have a 200 watt halogen bulb, a 65 watt uh, CFL bulb, and a 30 watt LED light bulb, each connected to its own electric usage monitor. Now with each light bulb turned off, we can see there's no current in any of the circuits, but the current increases through each light bulb when their respective switch is turned on. In this case, the current becomes about 1.71 amps, 0.81 amps, and 0.42 amps respectively. The power of each light bulb is also displayed on the monitors as about 199 watts, 52 watts, and 28 watts. You can confirm these power ratings by multiplying the current of each light bulb by 120 volts, taking into account some level of error. Now, if each light bulb was left on for one whole hour, then the energy consumed by each light bulb would be about 200 watt hours, 65 watt hours, and 30 watt hours respectively. And those values could be confirmed by reading the energy levels on the meter after one hour. This example also illustrates how more efficient devices like the LED light bulb can lower your overall energy consumption. These monitors can also be used to find phantom loads which consume power even when they're turned off. As an example, we'll connect an office printer to this electricity usage monitor. The printer is currently using a small amount of background power, just under three and a half watts, in order to maintain its standby operations. But once a printing command has been sent to the printer, then its power will increase, now displaying values around about 12 watts. So the printer is now operating just under its rated power, which is a product of 32 volts and 0.6 amps. Now, your electric demand may be underestimated if you only consider the standby power. Failure to account for the phantom power, on the other hand, could also result in undersizing the solar electric system. But we still haven't addressed how these power measurements or power ratings are helpful in sizing and designing a solar electric system. To do so, we'll consider a few simple calculations using either an inventory of all of our electrical loads or by using an electric utility bill. If you're considering a solar electric system for specific appliances or types of equipment, then you may want to develop an inventory of the electrical loads that you'll be powering by the solar electric system. You can download a simple template or calculator on our webpage at the link provided in the description below, or you can develop your own worksheet to use. In any case, we'll enter each electrical appliance that we want to power with the solar electric system. Looking at the first entry as an example, we'll consider the small motor that we looked at previously. If you recall, the power of the motor was 1,150 watts when running. So now let's assume that we operate the motor for roughly 15 minutes each day, which is one quarter of an hour. Next, we'll make an educated guess that the motor is used about 160 days out of the year. When we multiply these values together, we see that the motor consumes 46,000 watt hours of energy each year. But dividing that number by 1,000 gives us an annual energy consumption of 46 kilowatt hours for the motor. To look at another example, we'll consider a single 30 watt LED light bulb that's been used about five hours a day. And we'll assume the bulb is used almost every day of the year, let's say 360 days out of the year. If we multiply those values across this row, then we get 54,000 watt hours, or dividing that by 1,000, that's 54 kilowatt hours each year. Now, I'll point out two things here. First of all, you can see that the LED light bulb consumes more energy over the year, even though it has a lower power rating of only 30 watts. This is because the light bulb is operated much more often than the small motor. It's also worth pointing out that 
Many electrical loads, including most lighting applications, will typically have more than a single device in operation. In those cases, you can just multiply by the number of those particular devices that you have in operation. Let's say, for instance, that you actually have 10 of these LED light bulbs. Then you would just multiply by 10 to get a value of 540 kilowatt hours per year. Now, you would repeat this process for all other electrical loads, being sure that no device or appliance has been excluded unintentionally. Omitting an electrical load from this inventory could result in the solar electric system being undersized. While DC electric loads can be included in uh, your assessment, they're not going to be relevant when sizing an inverter. That's because inverters only supply AC power. In any sense, adding up all the devices on this inventory provides a total annual energy consumption of 2,086 kilowatt hours per year. This value would then be used to size your solar electric system. Now that we've looked at how to assess individual electric loads, we'll now use a standard electric utility bill to consider the energy load of an entire building or an entire operation. Now, a building statement will vary from one utility to the next, but we'll focus on the electric usage history that's shown on this particular utility bill. You may note that the units for energy are given in kilowatt hours, or KWH, and the energy consumption is summarized for each month over the past year. The summer months, June, July, and August, have a higher energy consumption, perhaps due to air conditioning, while smaller spikes in January and February may come from any fans or blowers within the heating systems. It really just depends on the setting or operation that's being reviewed. Anyways, we can add up each month over the course of the year to determine the annual energy use. In this case, I'll put the monthly energy values into a spreadsheet on the computer and easily calculate the annual energy use as 5,592 kilowatt hours. So, to supply all of this energy, our solar electric system would need to produce 5,592 kilowatt hours. While we considered the annual energy use in this example, daily or monthly values could be important when considering short-term use or when working off-grid with batteries. Looking at smaller chunks of time like this could help meet maximum daily or monthly energy demands. Now, it's easy to get excited about solar, photovoltaics, or other renewable energy systems, but energy conservation and energy efficiency should be considered first because they provide a foundation for smaller, more efficient, and affordable solar electric systems. This is because the size of your solar electric system is based on the amount of electricity that's used. So it's usually cheaper to reduce your energy use than to buy a larger renewable energy system. You may consider replacing inefficient lighting, appliances, equipment, or machinery that was discovered during an inventory of your electrical loads or perhaps identified through an actual energy audit. Well, I'm Drew Chavon with the University of Maryland Extension, and I hope this video has provided you with an understanding of how to calculate your annual energy use based on the power ratings of electrical devices or through independent measurements or even with the use of an electric utility bill. In the next video, we'll consider how much solar energy is available to meet this demand for the electrical loads and how many solar photovoltaic panels might be needed to supply that load. You can subscribe to this channel to stay connected on upcoming episodes of this Solar Eclipse video series, but in the meantime, please visit our website for more information on solar photovoltaics and other energy-related topics.